Hey everyone, this is Chaplain Dell here again this morning in the wee hours in the morning and I just couldn't sleep uh, thinking about something that a brother uh, brother Justin and I were speaking about um, about the churches, those people that name his name the church, the uh, salvation um, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel that the church feels that it has to be quickened to, to spread the gospel to the world and, um, and salvation for all that would come to the Lord Jesus Christ through his atonement on the cross and how much focus and time is uh, put into that. But really, what we what we were discussing, uh, Justin and me, uh, was that all the focus goes into salvation. Uh, the one saved, always saved. And so, where does the the pair the uh, um, the vine? I am the vine. You are the branches. Abide in me. Me and you. And you and me, uh, you know, and live. Where does all the 50% of the Bible, 50% of Jesus' ministry was about following him in spirit. It was about um, picking up your cross, follow me. The scribe in Matthew 8, I believe it was, says, Master, you know, how I follow you? And he was a theologian, a clergyman, let's just say. And Jesus said, the birds have their nests in the air and the foxes have their holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Again, his answer to that man was to follow me and follow him in spirit and in truth. Not some theological intellectual understanding not some behavioral modification I don't cuss I don't drink I don't smoke I uh, I love everybody Jesus loves everybody um, the, the, as Christian speaks does love your neighbor as yourself yeah yeah um, it does but it's not a sentimental type of love it's the love that meets the needs. If your enemy's, uh, you know, cold, give me your coat and that type of thing. There's an action. And if we know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that's going to be our nature that live, comes to live within us. That's going to be the nature change. We're not going to say to hell with them. We're say, hey, man, here, man, have my coat. You know, I, I, I've done that before. Uh, when I, I worked, there was a man didn't even have a winter coat. Well, I got plenty of jackets. So I say, hey, hey, man, take his jacket. Uh, that man was so happy to get that jacket, but it was natural. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to say you know, I'm being a do-gooder or, or it wasn't that the Christian thing to do. It was just that, you know, it was out of true love. Here, man. Take my coat, you know. That's what it's talking about. So many people think they have to do something for Jesus. We have to come to salvation. We have to. We have to act like this, and we have to act like that. Oh God, I, I have to have my quiet time each and every day. I have to pray. I have to do this. I have to do that. That's what they don't realize is. What they don't realize is, it's just abiding in Him. Be yourself. Let him live and listen to him within yourself. You know, um, I don't know, it's about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. I just sprang out of bed because I, I was quickened to do this this morning. But all the churches, anyway, focus on salvation. You know, shine your shoes and put on your, your Sunday best and do something for God. You know, that's uh, 
sorry. That don't cut it. It don't cut it if you got to put on your uh, Ivy League uh, blazer and uh, uh, wool pants and shine your shoes. You know, Victorian age kind of church thing. That don't cut it. God doesn't care. As I said before, it's a matter of heart. Oh, have you been saved? Do you know Jesus? Well, that's only step one in the equation. I hate to tell you, brothers and sisters. And Satan don't want people realizing the other half. The other half is to follow me. Not by behavior modification or actions. Oh, look at me. I have a clergy collar on. Hey, hey, uh... You know, a frock in the box. You know, I'm sorry if that offends somebody. Well, I'm really not sorry. I think it's kind of funny. Because it's all a matter of heart. It's not a matter of religiosity or study. You know, I was um, I was looking at the Bible dictionary um, yesterday. And I was reading about the Holy Spirit. And you know what, you know what that had the spirit of to me? Death. It was the spirit of death. I read all these intellectual things on the Holy Spirit. And um, I don't know if you're going to understand what I'm saying a lot, a lot of people. But um, let me show you the book. <laughs> it's a very good book. Very good book. See, okay. the New Bible Dictionary, and all these people, hmm. it's like the helmet of salvation I turned to, you know, but, um, this is fine, you know, if you want to help your mind, quicken your mind in the spirit of God, if there's something you don't understand, perhaps, this, this is the kind of thing that you do. That's what religious people do all the time. They get into that and they, they compartmentalize it here. But what I felt in spirit when I was reading that, as opposed to like reading the scriptures, was death. See, so many inches wide, so many inches tall. It fits like this. It works like this. It comes from this root word, you know. Um, no life in it, just intellectual assimilation uh, of uh, religious things, Bible things. No, following Christ is life. Following Christ is following Christ. There's no replacement for it. And I mean, please try to understand what I'm saying spiritually on the inside if you know him through his holy spirit the spirit of christ begotten above he is a living heavenly father that we can know within us and as i listen so i listen more and more to him each and every day i'm growing closer to him i'm hearing him more Things are making more sense to me. And you know, you know what, dear brother? I stopped going to church. Coming up on a year now. I stopped going to church. You know why I stopped going to church? So I could listen and follow him. And hear. And it's working. <laughs> Praise God, it's working. And if he wasn't real... Nothing would happen, would it? You know, that's the thing I said when I was a child, before I had my salvation. I said, well, if it's not real, nothing's going to happen. But it did happen, and it was real. And there's something to that. It's, it's, like, it's like maybe it wasn't real for everybody. So they play church. Are you saved? Yeah, I'm saved. I knew the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sin. Yes, but do you follow him in spirit? That's part two of the equation. And that's why I say, you know, that, that Justin and I were talking about the other day that uh, 
the church only only teaches half half the gospel. They teach about salvation, but they don't teach about following him. They teach about salvation and they say, follow me. The guy in the frock. The guy from the seminary. The guy with his sheepskin. You're not supposed to be following them. Any more than you're supposed to be following that book. The book of dry facts and intellectualism. Uh, an understanding. Now, what did Satan say to Eve? Surely you don't think. But Jesus Christ said, follow me. He's talking about in spirit because we all know that God is spirit. So what's he talking about? He's not saying, follow me here. He's not saying, you know, put on your pants and shine your shoes and follow me. You know, he's not saying, oh, let's be like Jesus. Let's modify our actions and live like Jesus. Now, most people do that. And uh, that's not a bad thing, I guess. But it shouldn't be mistaken for actually following him. You know, it's like... Uh, it's like you're an actor. You know? Are you actually following him because he's spirit? Or are you just acting the part? I fear that most people act the part. Aren't I a good Christian? You know? Um, I feed the poor. I go to church. I, uh, I don't have any foul languages that aren't poor. You know? <coughs> foul habits are that aren't glorifying to the temple because I'm a good Christian. <clears throat> That's not following Christ. Following Christ is done only in spirit. It's not done in pride, in the flesh. It's not done in good actions. It's not good in servitude to other people. That's what man has made it. And like I said earlier, you will naturally serve people because that's the nature of Christ in you if you know Jesus Christ. You will naturally love your enemy. And people say, well, it's not natural to love your enemy. No, it's not natural to love your enemy. It's because the nature changed within you. Are you, are you focus on what I'm saying? I'm talking about following Christ within you. If you don't hear that still small voice, if you don't, if you don't abide in the vine, you know, that's what Jesus is talking about. When the one of the again in Matthew, when the guy said, "Let me go bury my father," well, his father wasn't even dead yet. He was talking about collecting his inheritance. Christ said, "Let the dead bury their own dead." What are all these passages talking about? They're talking about following Him in spirit. These people were already saved. They already were saved from hellfire. Jesus doesn't say, "Well, we're all saved now." You know, so do all these things. No, he doesn't say to do all these things. That's what man does. That's what Satan does. He says, follow me. Listen to me. In spirit and in truth. And be my disciple. And he also says, few that it will be that find me. For broad is the road that leads to destruction. And narrow is the way that leads to life. He's talking about that narrow following him in spirit. Not just salvation. But salvation and following him. And the church leaves half the equation out. And I'm sorry. Like I said before, I was more I was uh trained up as a good Calvinist, but you know what? The Holy Spirit of God has quickened me the truth. It's about following Christ. Salvation is only the first part. The second part is about following Christ. And we all know the Apostle Paul was hard after that. And nothing else mattered to him. That's how much following Christ inside of you should be. And I'm telling you, it's not some left system church. It's become a lot easier to follow Christ. Because I was following something other than Christ. I was following a counterfeit. I was following something that looked like Christ. I thought I was doing right. But I was deceived. Brothers and sisters, we have to follow Lord Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth after our salvation. Our salvation is only the first part of the equation. And our sanctification, although God brings us along, we have to hold on to him and abide in him. Or we'll, we'll die. 
will die, will shrivel up and die and be burnt. That's why the passage says that. Well, that's why Jesus spent all his time and energy making those different analogies, not to have some egghead sit down there or tear down. Well, he must have meant this and he must have meant that. You know what? If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll show you what he meant. And I know what he meant. Well, God bless you, brothers and sisters. If you come to salvation, remember, that's the first part. The other part is to abide in him in spirit. Don't worry about the church. Don't let's sit and put you on a guilt trip. I'm talking about in here. Go to God each and every day personally and say, Lord, help me. Help me follow you. And let Satan take the rest and stuff it. All right? That's what following Jesus is all about. That's the second part of the equation toward salvation. That's the narrow way to follow him in spirit. Yes, re receive salvation. Be regenerated, but we have to abide in him to be regenerated. We have to have that life-changing um, sap oil cursing through our bodies to give us life. Now, don't worry about it if you go, oh, Geez, I haven't been doing that. Oh, man, I've lost my salvation. No, you got to make a conscious effort to walk away from Christ. He's not the author of confusion. He's still there. If you've, if you've come to salvation, he's still there. But get with him and make it a priority to follow him. And don't let mental gymnastics and theology and the likes block him. This is what I've been seeing with... A lot of church people, like Satan, Satan himself. So you don't think, oh, let's let's argue points of doctrine and argue points of theology. Nonsense. Follow Christ in spirit. If you see people arguing points of doctrine, arguing points of spirit, they're not walking in the spirit. They may not even know him. Hey, that's a heck of an indicator. Well, God bless you all. Remember, salvation is only 50% of the equation. God bless you, Brother Justin, and people like you that have uh, had the stones to, uh, to encourage me to follow Christ and not do the world church system for myself, for my own regeneration, and for my own growth. But it takes guts. You know, Martin Luther... Uh, took guts. Here I stand. I can do no more because we stand on the on the truth, the rock, who is Christ. Not intellectual assimilation of facts or behavioral modification, but on Christ Himself. Good day.